Boy, the left is really trying to be all things to all people when it comes to this conflict between the Israelis and Hamas. Really trying to be all things to all people. Uh, from Mr. 10%, the big guy, President Biden's uh, national address the other week, where he was unequivocal in America standing with Israel, to now he calling for a pause. Mm-hmm. Our very own senior senator calling for a ceasefire. Is a ceasefire needed now? I think it is, at least uh, under uh, in the context of both sides agreeing. For example, the release of those who have been kidnapped should be part of this immediate release. Uh, that should be the beginning of it. Uh, an effort should be made to engage in conversation between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Let's face it, this has gone on for decades. Uh, Whatever the rationale from the beginning, it has now reached an intolerable level. Uh, We need to have a resolution in the Middle East that gives some promise for the future. Have you told the president, Uh the White House? uh Mm -hmm. So ceasefire, the the mealy mouth ceasefire rhetoric. Uh, John Kirby, NSC spokeshuman on aid to Gaza as uh, a uh, requirement for support from the White House to any sort of aid package that would include Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan. Take a listen. The the way the House Republicans have carved this out is no humanitarian assistance. It only goes to security assistance for Israel. And that's got to be a non-starter. I mean, that's nothing nothing more than partisan politics right there. I mean, here we are. I've been taking I don't know how many questions about civilian casualties and the desperation of the people in Gaza. I mean, it's incorrigible that anybody would think that we wouldn't need some additional funding to help get food, water, and medicine to these people. They didn't cause this. They didn't ask for that. Hamas doesn't represent them. They're victims, too, and they need that support. Well, I mean— Hamas literally does represent them since they're the governing right. body in Gaza. Literally, they, they voted represent them, them in 2007, I believe. Yes. I mean, so I'm all for humanitarian aid to um, uh, innocents caught in the crossfire. But I mean, how much have we provided uh, in aid to Gaza over the last, I don't know, decade alone? And how are we assuring that the uh, humanitarian aid would get to Palestinian people and not just be commandeered by Hamas. And don't we have uh, UN trucks ramping up their delivery of this aid? And don't we provide a great deal of funding to the UN generally and specific aid agencies like the World Programs uh, uh, beyond that? And do you really understand? You're the national security spokesman. Do you understand what Israel's doing? Because Mike McCall seems to, amid all of the propagandizing about bombing a refugee camp, Mike McCall understands what Israel is doing because he's watching. He's the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Republican from Texas, and here's what he sees. I think what's important to know, and I talked to Cindy McCain, the World Food Program, they're very good in combat situations, getting aid in. The trucks now have gone from like 14 to now 100 per day of giving, you know, bringing medicine and food. Uh, in, but if you look at uh, the battlefield right now in central Gaza, you can see what uh, the IDF, the Israeli uh, troops, are starting to do. They they want to blockade uh, northern Gaza from southern Gaza, and then create a humanitarian zone, if you will, in southern Gaza, where I think this relief can be more readily deployed, and to get uh, people out of there as well, particularly the dual uh, citizens that are both uh, have American citizenship um, and uh, and Palestinian. Um, it would be great if Egypt would take some of them or UAE or Saudi, but they won't, unfortunately. And, and so we're, we're kind of dealt with the cards we have. Uh, but I think that's a strategy is to isolate southern Gaza and turn it into a humanitarian zone away from Hamas in the north. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by Brett Baer, host of Fox News Special Report, weekdays 5 p.m., best-selling author of the just-released To Rescue the Constitution, George Washington and the Fragile American Experiment. Brett, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Good morning. So um, do you see uh, the administration, the Biden administration, sort of watering down their position from where it was a week or 10 days ago, or am I being unfair? No, I think that that's what you're seeing. I think that uh, the Israelis 
see that. I had Mark Regev on the show uh, last night, and basically he thought, listen, we, we are not going to pause. Uh, this is going to push through. We're going to go after, you know, these, and they call them monsters, who um, who pulled off these October 7th attacks. And, you know, they are trying desperately to, to miss and uh, reduce civilian casualties. They know that that's a big part of this, and they're trying to figure out ways to get at these Hamas leadership targets uh, without taking out civilians. The problem is Hamas uses civilians as human shields, and um, that is their M.O. They're holding people in these places. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting to see how the administration kind of has changed uh, from the beginning, which was one way, then to moral clarity and standing with the Israelis, then to, you know, kind of calling for this this pause. No one was calling for the America to pause after we were going after al-Qaeda terrorists around the world uh, after 9-11. Nobody was saying you need to dial it back uh, when we were dropping bombs on leadership targets that did take out uh, civilians. And um, that's where the Israelis' head is. Yeah, and, 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 and one of the things we could be saying is um, – in uh, we, obviously we want to everybody wants to limit uh, uh, civilian casualties as Israel does. And you heard Mike McCall like, here's what the military is actually doing. If you take a look at it and get beyond some of the rhetoric. But the other thing we would say, look, we can't take a pause or a ceasefire. And I don't really understand the difference between those two words, um, b- because the Israelis should be acting on intelligence they have in pursuit of a strategy they're uh, affecting to take out Hamas as soon as possible. That you, This is not a, to allow, you, you can't allow them to uh, take evasive action, to have the time to take evasive action if you want this to be resolved sooner rather than later. Yeah, and the other thing is a ceasefire indicates two sides. Well, there aren't two sides. Right. Hamas officials are out publicly saying, no, our intifada, our uh, war against Israel to destroy Israel will continue no matter if they pause or not. And of all people, you know, I I can tell that you are aligned with Hillary Clinton on this. (laughs) And uh, I won't tell anybody, (laughs) but uh, that's what she said. Well, right. I mean, you're pushback for that, too. You're talking about Ghazi uh, Hamad, who uh, is a Hamas spokeswoman. He's on Lebanese television. Uh, if we will repeat October 7th massacre time and again, a million times if we need to, until we end the occup- occupation, the journalist asked him occupation of Gaza. And he said, no, all of Israel. I mean, there's, there's real clarity in that statement. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's in their charter. Uh, so there is no ceasefire coming from that way is, is my point. And, um, I think, listen, the Israelis think about uh, civilian casualties a lot and how, and McCall rightly points out that the effort that they did with the dropping of the leaflets trying to move the civilian population to the south, the problem is, again, Hamas uses civilians around its headquarters and prevents them from moving to safety. And now, what do we know about, they said, you know, during the initial attack on October 7th that 30 Americans were killed, or 29 or 30, and that 10 are being held hostage still. Do we know about their backstories or who they are? So we have a confirmed 17 on mm-hmm. October 7th, um, and we have their pictures and their bios, and we're trying to get into, you know, finding some of those families, and some of them have talked out, some of them have spoken out. Uh, the number 10 is, is what the government is going on as far as unaccounted for, believed to be held hostage in, in Gaza. Uh, on the, um, the politics of aid here, so, uh, of course, the House Republicans moved the standalone Israeli aid. That's a non-starter for John Kirby, um, uh, probably for a number of reasons, only one of which he gave. Uh, McCall said uh, in that same interview yesterday that, uh, you know, he sees all the threats linked together. Russia, Iran, Hamas, uh, Chinese Communist Party. Um, and so ultimately he sees a essentially a comprehensive aid package moving through the House. But there, there's a real divide in the Republican caucus, it seems to me, and it's growing between the McCall position and, say, the Speaker Johnson position. 
I agree. And I think Speaker Johnson is winning. I think that um, that that aid package to Israel that included pay fors by pulling out the money from the IRS even got 12 Democratic votes. And so, you know, you have a bipartisan piece of legislation that is going to be tough for Senate Democrats to vote against and say, we are not going to give this immediate aid to Israel. So from a political standpoint, I think, you know, Johnson is kind of walking through the tulips here pretty well. He he wants to tie Ukraine aid to border security uh, to be able to get that through. And, you know, I, I think that that's an interesting way, a hat tip to the right of his caucus, uh, but still pushing through these aid packages. And if the president vetoes the Israeli aid, that's just not going to be a good look on the world stage either. Right. Uh, I wanted to get to um, the uh, massacre in Maine and what we know, because, of course, the uh, Democrats have been using this as they normally do to tr- advance a, their call for gun bans, the sport weapon bans, some banning of some sport rifles and that. Kamala Harris uh, going a little bit further and suggesting a mandatory gun buyback Australian style. But we now know uh, this week that uh, the U.S. Army did take action against uh, the responsible person that after he was um, taken to this hospital, uh, this West Point hospital in New York for evaluation, the U.S. Army said he was non-deployable and shouldn't have access to weapons. And so now we go, it seems to me, to question, well, if if that's what the U.S. Army concluded and uh, state police in Maine were notified, why wasn't that yellow flag law uh, it, uh, pursued uh, to its logical conclusion, which is to make sure that's part of his record in terms of any background check and to uh, pursue this individual with a, perhaps more alacrity than the police, the domestic police did. Yeah, it wasn't the original access. It was the follow up that they that he was flagged already. And um, the fact that it didn't work shows sometimes these laws don't work. You know, they fall through the cracks. So there is an issue, big issue there, and there's obviously a big issue with mental health. I think there's going to be a, a real battle still, uh, and I don't see any movement about where we were politically about confiscating guns or the fact that um, that there's this big push. I don't see an assault weapons ban on its way down the pike anytime soon. Brett Baer, host of Fox News Special Report, weekdays 5 p.m., best-selling author of the just-released book, To Rescue the Constitution, George Washington and the Fragile American Experiment. Brett, thank you as always. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one, Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank, a bank where relationships still matter. I'm Dan Proft, and I know this because Signature Bank is my business bank. Hey all, Jim Carr here. I am the owner of Car Machine and Tool in Elk Grove Village and loyal customer of Signature Bank. As a second generation owner, I knew I had to shift from 